Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Here, an artist's conception of... We often hear that the precipitating event was the launching of Sputnik and that there was a great deal of concern about the status of American science education and mathematics education because we were in the middle of the Cold War and we were being outcompeted by the Soviet Union. But I think that there was also considerable concern about the status of science education before that. You are hearing the actual signals transmitted by the Earth-circling satellite, one of the great scientific feats of the age. And that established the emphasis for the government to move in and say, we've got to do a better job in science education. Congress allocated substantial sums of money to the National Science Foundation with the instruction that it should work to improve science education in our secondary schools. One of the important innovations in the Sputnik era was the formation of groups of individuals whose task it was to think about and design and develop curriculum programs. The Committee on Education of the American Institute of Biological Sciences designed the Biological Sciences Curriculum Study. This study was an outgrowth or a reflection of the concern biologists have for the place that biology plays in this, this nation's educational scheme. One of the key people was Dr. Bentley Glass. Our world is changing at a tremendous pace, day by day and month by month. And science and the technologies based upon it are very largely responsible for this. That is why we of the BSCS think that every student, not merely those who are going to be scientists in the future, but everyone, should know what it is like to face a problem in a scientific way and to understand what it is the difference between a scientific method and other methods of trying to solve problems. Honesty and integrity are prime requisites of a good scientist. Precise measurements, accurate observations, clear reports and controlled experiments grow out of those characteristics. Scientific work is also a social undertaking. That is to say, it is a group activity. He brought together a steering committee for the BSCS of quite distinguished biologists. That's how it got started. I think you'd have to go back in time a considerable bit to understand the very poor quality of science education in the United States up till about 1960. The very best-selling secondary school book, for example, didn't contain the word evolution even in the index. There was nothing about human reproduction, a rhetoric of conclusions, a teaching method that in essence was saying, look kid, I want to tell you something and I want you to remember it for the test. And all in all, the type of thing that would drive students from science. I think they realized as they got into this that it would have to be an ongoing enterprise. And they committed BSCS to that and you see we're celebrating a 50th anniversary now. The mission of BSCS 50 years ago and the mission of BSCS today is essentially the same to improve all students' understanding of science and technology through the design of exemplary instructional materials complemented by the professional development of teachers and continual feedback about the effectiveness of those instructional materials through research and evaluation. When you're providing leadership, you're ahead of the market. What we're looking at is what's not working in schools and how do we provide options in professional development, research, and curriculum materials that will help solve problems. At the early committee meetings, there was considerable discussion about the organization of biology. We might further divide living things into various levels of organization. Finally, the BSCS has superimposed on this block 
nine themes which comprise the major ideas of the discipline. What's important about having themes like that is if you can instantiate those themes in, in the minds of the learners and in the developers, all of this new information that floods us has a place to go in the mind of the learner. Today, all of our science programs, biology, multidisciplinary, integrated science, have a structure that begins with unifying themes from the key disciplines that we're trying to convey in a given year or across an entire program. There was never any doubt that evolution is a major theme that must be in the biology curriculum. BSCS has never wavered on that, nor has NABT or NSTA. Well, <laughs> when I was associate director, one of my jobs at least three years in there somewhere, was to go, our textbooks were being held out of schools in some places, be where there was a powerful religious uh, interpretation of life. And, and one of those trips every year was down to uh, Texas when they had the state textbook uh, committee meetings. Well, their textbook committees, uh, much as we've seen recently in Kansas, their textbook committees could be stacked against us. And generally, we won those wars. Sometimes we lost. We might get in two versions instead of three. But it was a continual battle. It wasn't easy. Because BSCS books now were just uh, being very straightforward about evolution and talking about it, it seemed that a lot of other textbook publishers chose to do this as well. And so now here's this book introduced at the beginning of my second year teaching at Central, which included this chapter on the history of man. What do I do? Do I teach this textbook, which I've been given, which includes a topic that is supposedly illegal in the state, and do what I think is a good job of teaching my students, or do I uh, ignore that chapter and just not teach that and, uh, and abide by the law? Science is not anti-faith. It's not anti-religion. I also think it's very important, and this is true of the BSCS books, that the processes of research and so forth become a part of the education. The pedagogical approach was inquiry. It wasn't so much to tell kids as to ask them and to try to the extent possible to represent the nature and methods of science in the science classroom. How do we go about asking questions? How do we go about accumulating evidence to answer those questions, to give us insights into the way the natural world works? Ask a question in such a way that the audience becomes involved in designing and, or wanting to design some either verbal, written, or laboratory solutions to the problem. And one young lady, I can't remember where she went to school, wrote to us and told us that she had gotten A's in all of her courses up until she got to the BSCS course. And she said, it's very easy for me to get all A's because I can memorize very easily. But in the BSCS course, I only got a C because I had to think. And she said, and that's the best course I had. And you learn lots better because you can read it. You don't have to really know what you're reading because, you know, questions are in the back. You can always flip back a few pages and write down the same question and you get the points for it. But you don't remember it. I think it could be much more beneficial to the students if they could kind of move out on their own and try and discover some of these things. They can do this. You don't have to tell them. I mean, there are some things you have to tell kids, certainly. And I think one of the best products we ever did, by the way, at BSCS, and I had nothing to do with it, I wasn't there, the single topic inquiry films, which were just wonderful. They ran on these loop projectors. The inquiry you are about to see is designed for your active participation. It is different from other programs where you only watch and listen. You will be asked to observe carefully, discuss your ideas, and offer explanations. If you talk to kids and teachers, what you find out is they're interested in doing science. They want to ask questions, they want to gather information, they want to draw conclusions. Science is dynamic. Kids love to do science. Teachers who are committed to teaching science well like to teach inquiry-based science.
This is the McKenna Building on the campus of the University of Colorado in Boulder, Colorado, headquarters of the Biological Sciences Curriculum Study. The steering committee members felt there is no single best way to teach biology. There are many good ways. After some debate, they decided on trying three ways to teach biology. The fact that BSCS had three different programs at least softened some degree any criticism of it being a national curriculum. It also accommodated the emerging areas in biology. For example, the green version was the ecological version and we're talking about an era when environmental issues and, and ecology were just beginning to really develop. We rented a dormitory from the University of Colorado. We assigned the first three floors as sleeping quarters, and the fourth floor served as offices. And each office was occupied by a research biologist from a university and a high school teacher. And each time any individual pair finished writing a chapter or a laboratory exercise, it was mimeographed and circulated among all the uh, 90 writers. They were instructed to pick up whatever they'd like for their own version. So essentially, these books were be prepared not by individual little teams, but by the whole group. And it was always a team approach. It wasn't one or two or three people sitting down and, and doing it because you always had this interaction of people. You had those teachers there. And we continue to this day to bring that mix of people to the table. We have writing teams that have uh, scientific expertise, educational expertise. We have writing conferences. We have advisory boards where we get multiple perspectives. Um, our staff is comprised of both scientists and people who have teaching experience as well as educational research backgrounds. There's nothing about BSCS that doesn't include teamwork and collaboration. You'd put something out there for discussion and then somebody would say, well, that's not holding together very well, so let's take, and it, and it was great. It was just great, and uh, it's almost become a cliche at BSES, but I heard it the first week I was there. You sort of check your ego at the door.